Welcome to Statistics in Excel video number 24. As always, if you want to download this workbook, go to my college website link and you can download Business 210 Chapter 2 Workbook. Hey, this is an exciting video here because finally we're going to get to do frequency distributions with pivot tables. We have so far done a bunch of formulas for quantitative data and there was lots of steps and it was quite involved. Now you still have to figure out what size groups you want. So uh, you still have to go through those steps. But then once you have those, creating a frequency distribution with a pivot table is much faster. However, there is one major uh, problem, and that is the labels. Now, here we're, it says frequency we're going to create a frequency distribution where the source data are integers. Scroll down. If we want to group by customer age, those are integers. Now, there's a second frequency distribution which we will create where source data are decimals. So when we create our frequency distribution and group by sales, those are decimals. The pivot table will create labels for the decimals that are ambiguous. So you just don't want to leave those labels. You want to change them. It's relatively straightforward, and I have an amazingly cool trick for it but don't leave the labels ambiguous, and we'll see that in just a moment. So that's why here it says create frequency distribution from integers and create frequency distribution from decimals. Then we'll create a relative frequency distribution, a percent frequency distribution, and a histogram. Similarly, uh, with a pivot table, uh, percent and relative frequency distributions are easy and quick. Here's our source data that we've been using uh, throughout these videos. Uh, and we're going to create a frequency distribution on age and sales. First, let's do the hard one. Let's do the uh, decimals. Now, remember, when you do a pivot table, you have to have your data set up correctly. Field names at the top, no spaces anywhere, and rows are records. Click in one cell, and in 2007, go to Insert, Pivot Table, Pivot Table. The keyboard shortcut is Alt-NVT, NVT. There's the range. It got it right. I'm going to dump this into this existing sheet by clicking in location. And I want to very carefully select L18 and then click OK. Now I'm going to scroll over so we can see our beginning uh, pivot table here. And we're doing the decimal. So we need the sales numbers and we need to group them. Now, uh, we. Uh, I've just decided for, for this one, I've done some calculations, and we're going to group starting at 10 and go up by increments of 50. Here is the, oh, we have to scroll down, and there's the sales. You want to drop it into the rows. Instantly, it gives us our list, but we want to right click here in these uh, row labels and point to group. Group. And we're going to start with 10 and go up to 300. Now remember, in uh, a couple of videos ago, we, sh uh, we did lots of calculation doing the max and the min and 2 raised to the k and all of that to calculate where to start and uh, how big each class has to be. So you have to go through all those steps. But once you do that, then this pivot table option is much better. So we're going to start at 10, go to 300, and group by 50. Now watch. I put 300 here, but Excel will be smart enough to um, the last group will be a little bit bigger because the 50 won't fit just perfect. So now I'm going to click OK. And just like that, that is so amazing. 10 to 60, 60, uh-oh, 60 to 110, 110 to 160. I better, I better blow this up. And hopefully before I say it, you will see what the problem is with these labels. Well, here's the situation. There's a 60 there and a 60 there. What? what? Where does the 60 go? In which one? Well, the pivot table itself will not mix this up. It's just the look of the labels that makes it look like. The 60 will always go here. As we saw in earlier videos, we can say 10 up to 60, up to but not including 60. And then here it will be 60 up to but not including 110. So the 60 will go here. The 110 will go here. We just need to fix these labels. Here's the trick. You can, as always, just click in a label like this and type 10 up to 60. But why do that? Because then you have to type it for each one. I'm going to click Escape. You could hit Enter, right? And then type each one. That's fine. But there's a, an amazing feature called Replace. 
I'm going to control Z to undo that. And here's how you do it. You highlight the range and only the range with the um, things you want to replace. And we want to replace that dash. Notice that the pattern is dash, dash, dash between each one. If we use, just use the replace feature and says, hey, find all the dashes and put up to, oh, that'll be so fast. Now, the keyboard shortcut for find in 2007 home, and then uh, under the home ribbon in the editing group, there's find and replace. So you can do it that way. The keyboard shortcut for find if, is Control F. And since that keyboard shortcut, Control F, works basically in every program in the world, then you could just remember Control F and then click on Replace. However, if you want, and you use Replace all the time, Replace is Control H. However you do it, um, Replace. And it looks like I have this from last time. So you've got to type a dash here, and then Tab, and then Space up space to space. Remember, oops, you, yo. So up yo. No, we want uh, two and then space. That way that space there and there will very uh, nicely give us some space between the 10 and the 60. Now here's the trick. You just click replace all. And because we've highlighted just the range we wanted, it works perfect. Click OK. Click OK. So if you want to do all of your homework using uh, uh, pivot tables um, on the test I might ask you uh, one function uh, example too but in general if you can remember how to correct the labels using this uh, replace trick the pivot table is going to be faster now we need some values here so let's click over here click our values and click over here and uh, close on our field list and sure enough it counted uh, if that's not the count, then you could right click, go to value field settings, and you have the option between our 11 functions to pick whichever one you want. I'm going to click uh, count and then click OK. Now let's click here and type frequency. And then click here and type sales in parentheses, a dollar sign, to tell us that this is in dollars. These are in dollars. And there you go. That's how to uh, do it, the uh, frequency distribution for decimal data, creating the cor uh, correct uh, labels here that are not ambiguous. Now, let's see. I'm going to control and roll. We did this for decimals. Let's do it for integers. And we're going to do a pivot table based on our, our age groups. I'm going to click somewhere in the pivot table and go to insert pivot table, pivot table, or alt NVT. I'm going to dump it. It's got the right range. I'm going to dump it in this sheet, but I'm very carefully going to scroll over and click in cell, click in cell 018, and then click OK. Scroll over here. And now we want to go to our age right here and drag it to the rows. Boop. And there, we got a group. Right click, group. Now again, you have to make your calculations in. This is the part of statistics that's art, which we talked about in great uh, detail in earlier uh, videos. But here, I, I've already done my analysis. I'm going to start with 15, and I'm going to go all the way up to 65, and I want to group by 10. Watch this. This is uh, these are for integers, so watch how the label comes out different. I'm going to click OK. Whoa, 15 up to 24. 25 up to 34. Hey, look, over here, remember it came out 10 60, 60. So the 60 was here and here. But when you do integers, it knows that 24 is the last one, so it puts it there. And that's why this label for integers works just fine for a pivot table. Now we just drag our customer age to the values area. And sure enough, just like that, we have our um, frequency distribution. Now let's uh, change this word here, click and type frequency. Hopefully I typed it right. And here's our patterns. Do we see any patterns? 50, 50, 30, 23, 38. So most of the uh, uh, people were from age 15 to 34, so like 103, right? Over here for our dollar amounts, just as we thought, you know, as you get higher and higher uh, sales totals, we have a frequency much smaller. And you can see 104 between the 10 up to $60 range. So most of the people are buying just one, two, or three boomerangs. All right, when we come back in our next video, we'll see how to do uh, percentage um, 
pivot tables based on these and a histogram. All right, see you next video.